Hello, I'm Bob Vanderherchen, Bob the Bee Guy. I've been doing structural live honeybee removals for 18 years. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to remove and save honeybee colonies, be sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss anything. I'm going to show you how to remove bees and comb from the block wall of a dugout at the ball field and repair the wall. And we're going to start right now. I'm at the high school baseball field. Honeybees have infested the block wall of one of the dugouts. The bees are going in a hole that was apparently made for a discontinued water pipe going through the wall to the water fountain on the other side. How would you like to try to get a drink with bees exiting here? The first thing to do is drill some test holes to find out where the nest starts and stops. It turns out the bees enter the hole and continue up where they have started their comb at the top course and down to just above the entrance hole. I mark off a six inch opening every other block and open the block with a grinder fitted with a seven inch diamond blade. This is just the right size to cut through the block without hitting any wires or pipes that may be inside. Always be sure to wear an OSHA approved dust mask for this type of work. If you've made the cuts properly, just tap with a hammer and they come right out. I've seen guys use sledgehammers to break open walls. Never do this. It sends cracks all over the wall. Once the cutouts are removed, you can see the bees and the comb in the wall. I start by capturing the bees using a homemade bee vac. The bees wind up in a screen box for transportation to my bee yard. I grab a piece of comb with tongs and a knife. I stuff ab absorbent pads in the wall at the bottom of the comb to keep honey from running down inside the wall. The pads can be purchased in the adult diaper department of your local Walmart or a grocery store. I cut and remove, work the comb out between the openings using a knife, tongs, spatula, hive tool. Sometimes I have to replace the absorbent pad or I'll place an absorbent pad in the next hole if I have to work up to be between two or three holes. Once everything is cleaned out, I stuff insulation in the voids to make sure there's no room for bees in the future. After I get the stuffing in, I cut metal lath to fit the openings that I've made. And this backs up the mortar and strengthens it. I mix up fast setting mortar and trowel it on, forcing mortar into the cut lines on either side of the cutout. I use rapid set mortar mix available at Home Depot. It's strong, fast setting, and can be painted an hour after it sets. Finish troweling the mortar into all the holes and then finish to match the texture of the rest of the wall when you're done. You can paint it after it sets. Thanks for watching and be sure to click the thumbs up like button and subscribe so you don't miss anything in the future.